Welcome to By Faith with Frank Shelton. Frank speaks at the schoolhouse. The church house and has even been interviewed at the White House, but is most grateful to speak life into your house. Now, here's Frank Shelton. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of By Faith. I'm Frank Shelton and I'm so glad you've tuned in. Man, we treasure our time together. We take nothing or no one for granted. I just wanna give you a polite reminder. Uh, we're sharing stories about increasing your faith and each week I'm sharing some of my story. I believe we make history when we tell his story. I also want to challenge you to go to the website frankshelton.com, click on the Amen corner, and just uh, share your story where God has stretched you, where you sharing your story where others can read. I also want to encourage you uh, to maybe be transparent and talk about a time that maybe you did not um, step out with God. So whatever the story may be, I just, we'd love to hear from you. This is a team effort. But this week, I want to share with you a message called, Are You Waiting on the Lord, or Is the Lord Waiting on You? This is probably my favorite Old Testament passage in all the Bible. I used to work at Family Christian Bookstores in Waldorf, Maryland at the St. Charles Town Center, and I'm going back. The mall opened in 1990, and uh, I used to work there when it first opened up. I mean, I saw this passage on coffee mugs, on ink pens, um, posters, wherever they had this, and I love the American bald eagle, and it's a biblical fact that the eagle is mentioned more than any other bird in all the Bible, and I just believe you're tuned in today. Don't change that dial because God has a word for you. The message again, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, are you waiting on the Lord, or is the Lord waiting on you? Uh, we live in a microwave mentality. We don't want it tomorrow. We don't want it now. We wanted it like yesterday. But God doesn't roll with microwaves. Christ relates to crockpots. It may take a while, but it is worth the wait. My friend Tim Lee said years ago, you can get what you want, but you may lose out on what God had. Um, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. The Bible said, hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. God giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And the message again this morning is, are you waiting on the Lord or is the Lord waiting on you? I'm sure you've been to an amusement park. You've waited in 100 degree heat. Maybe you've waited two hours for a three minute ride. Has anyone done that? Maybe you're watching by phone or television, iPad, maybe on Facebook today. Raise your hand if you've waited. You know what I'm talking about. Most of us hate to wait. We hate to wait to drive. We hate to wait to date. We can't wait to get out of town to move from our parents. But I'm telling you, there is wisdom in waiting. We're going to learn today that even Jesus, the Son of God, had to learn to wait on his Father. And there is problems when you get ahead of God. And someone once said, you can pick your sin, but you don't get to pick your consequences. And salvation is free but discipleship is costly. And I wanna give you a couple things today. First of all, we need to wait on the Lord for our partner. If you're taking notes today, I'm gonna to let the cat out of the bag. It all starts with P. We need to wait on the Lord for our partner. One of the greatest privileges of my life is I've had the honor for the, about the last year to be linked with the My Hope with Billy Graham project. Uh, Billy Graham's grandson wrote the foreword to my last book, 
And um, one of the greatest stories, I just preached on TBN last month for a share and I shared with him that a story that I heard that really encouraged me. In 1937, there's a young man named William who's going to Bible college who's called to preach. He's dating a preacher's daughter. They're the class couple. Everybody knows they're getting married, and they are engaged, and now it's pushing 1939-40. The preacher's daughter engaged to a preacher at a Bible college, not last week, not last year, over 75 years ago. The woman comes up and says to her fiancé, William, I can no longer marry you. And he said, baby, what are you talking about? And she said, I've been dating another man behind your back who's just been accepted to Harvard's Theological Seminary. And he looked at her and said, baby, what are you talking about? And she said, William, I've been dating another man who's also called into the ministry, and he's going to make it big in the ministry. He's going to make a mark in the ministry. And she looked at her fiancé, and she said, William, you're not that guy. And his heart sunk. He loved the game of golf. The course was closed. It's 9 o'clock at night, and this guy, William, called to preach at a Bible college, engaged to a preacher's daughter, walks alone. His world is upside down. He thought his life was over. He begins to walk at 9 o'clock at night, all 18 holes, and around midnight gets up to the 18th green. He looks up at the moon with blurry vision, with tears cascading down his face like Niagara Falls, and he screamed, My God, this is the worst night of my life. The woman I thought for sure was going to be my wife has just told me she's running off with another man. Instead of getting bitter, he got better, and he said, God, I have no idea what you're doing. He said, But today... You can have all of me there is to have. And the beautiful thing is we don't know the name of his first fiance. We don't know if that dummy ever graduated from Harvard. But when she said, William, I can't marry you, she turned down William Franklin Graham. She turned down Billy Graham to marry somebody else. And if anybody has made a mark in the ministry, it's been none other than my hero of the faith, Dr. Billy Graham. And if Billy Graham was here today, he would tell you that God often makes you even when it feels like he's breaking you. Your mess today with his message tomorrow will feed the masses. God doesn't use the blessed. He uses broken people. And I also want to tell you not only wait on the Lord for your partner, but you need to wait on the Lord for your prayers. I have found only three answers to prayer in all of Scripture. I haven't found three million. I haven't found 3,000. I haven't found 300. I haven't even found 30. There are three answers to prayer. Number one, God will say yes, God may say no, or he'll whisper the word wait. I used to think in my immature thinking that wait and yes, two out of three chances of getting what I want from God ain't wrong. Prayer is not getting what I want. It's accepting what he has for my life. And what I also want you to see is God in his wisdom, looking now at 43, i rather hear no from God in heaven than me demand and dictate what I want. Because what I dictate usually ends in destruction. So wait on the Lord for your partner, but we also got to wait on the Lord for our prayers. I was working at the U.S. Capitol. I did two decades on Capitol Hill with public service with the government. I was appointed floor staff in 1995. They told me I was the youngest in arguably 60 years to be appointed floor staff of the United States Senate. Three people out of 5,000 with the Senate worked on the floor, and I had the privilege to work for all 100 U.S. senators. A special agent with the Capitol Police came up while I was on break and whispered in my ear and said, Frank, do you like Garth Brooks? I said, yes, the country singer, I do. He said, he's next door in the rotunda of the Capitol. Can I introduce you to Garth Brooks? I said, absolutely, let's meet Garth Brooks. And I went to the next room, my favorite room of my favorite building, the rotunda, the Dome of Democracy, the People's Building, Washington, D.C. And have you ever been in a place where you know you don't belong? I thought there'd be 400 people watching Garth Brooks give a press conference. And I thought when it was over, maybe get a chance to shake his hand, get an autograph, and like Elvis, leave the building. The special agents prayed a joke on me. There's 400 sitting watching the press conference, but I came in a side door that I didn't ask for. 
unbeknownst to me, and I accidentally interrupted a press conference, and it was Garth Brooks lobbying Congress on behalf of the National Endowment for the Arts, and he was saying, don't cut the congressional funding. To my left, the three men on the platform was Kenny G, Michael Bolton, Garth Brooks, and Forrest Gump. I always joke, Tom Hanks probably could have paid me because I was Forrest Gump before Forrest Gump. And Garth Brooks was looking at me. He was agitated. He's wearing cowboy boots, denim jeans, a big belt buckle, a 10-gallon hat, and he's looking at the camera, and he's looking at me. He's looking at the camera. He's looking at me. And I was as scared. I was as white as a ghost. I saw three cameras with red lights. It was ABC, CBS, and NBC. And all I could think of is, Houston, we have a problem. I didn't ask for this. They just asked that I want to meet Garth Brooks. And when it was over, he came right up to me, and he said, what's your name? I saw my whole political career fly by. I thought, this is where I'm going to get fired. And the Bible says he'll give you a word to say at that very moment. I told him my name was Frank. I walked through these gates as if it's the first day, knowing it could be the last day. And I really thought my political career was over. I'm thinking if my boss is watching the news or C-SPAN, I'm going to lose my job. I look at the special agent. They were friends of the family. They thought it was a joke, funny to them. I'm thinking politically career-threatening to me. And I looked at Garth Brooks, and he said, is there a song of mine that's ever done anything for you? And I had a nanosecond, and I said, yes. That song, By Yours, Unanswered Prayers, is my all-time favorite song. I remember he wrote it. He was the captain of his high school football team. He played from Oklahoma. He's dating, I believe it was the homecoming queen of his high school. They were the class couple. Everybody and their brother knew they were going to get married. And weeks before, they broke up and went their separate ways. I remember the song. He wrote it. My mom had the lyrics from her CD. And if you don't recall the song, it said, Just the other night at a hometown football game, my wife and I ran into my old high school flame. And he said, God, I'll never ask for anything again if you allow that woman to be my wife. Well, it wasn't meant to be. They went their separate ways. And what are the odds? He hadn't seen his wife in 10 years. He hadn't been to his old alma mater in 10 years. And he's sitting at the top of an old high school football stadium where he used to dominate on the field. And he runs in to the girl he used to always pray would be his wife. And they begin to reminisce. They begin to talk. And they realized it worked out for the best that they didn't fall in love. And I love that chorus. Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. And remember when you're talking to the man upstairs, just because he doesn't answer don't mean he don't care. It's just that God's greatest gifts are your unanswered prayers. And that day he said before we left, he said, Frank, happiness isn't getting what you want. It's wanting what you got. And a lot of us as Christians give God glory and give him thanks for answered prayers. But maturity as a born-again Christian, tonight I want to challenge you to get on your knees and maybe thank God by faith for the prayers that still remain unanswered. Here's a word for someone. I believe there's someone today, whether California or Columbus, there's somebody today thinking you've just had a relationship walk out the door. Remember this, man's rejection is usually God's protection. Continue to date Jesus during this time. And in God's timing, he's never in a hurry, but he's always on time. Real quick, wait on the Lord for our partner, our prayers, and our problems. I mentioned before that the eagles mention more in the Bible than any other bird. God has his eye on the sparrow. Today, he has his eyes on you. But thank God. There's a special place in the heart of Almighty God with the American bald eagle. It's the symbol of our great country. Quickly, the average weight of an American bald eagle is 22 pounds. The reason bird lovers have to wear arm guards, it's a fact the talons of an eagle are so big, they can break the forearm of a human being in three places like a pretzel. The eyesight of an eagle is second to none. I learned in elementary school, it can be on top of a mountain and a mile away, see a small bass or trout in a stream and pick it up for lunch. I've been told that eagles can come up on the back of an antelope in Australia and with its massive wings, break the back of an antelope in midair. They've been known to come up on the, on the prairie flying and can pick up a doe or deer, 110 pounds. The catch is the eagle can only pick it up three quarters of an inch off the ground, but he can carry it for three quarters of a mile without dropping it. A 22-pound bald eagle 
can pick up a 110 pound antelope, I'll do the math for you, five times exactly the bird's weight. And this secular scientist, an atheist, didn't even believe in the Lord, for 40 years could have studied any bird in the world. He chose the American bald eagle. In 40 years of research, he learned some valuable lessons. I'm gonna give you the cliff notes. Number one, he said that eagles do not roll in groups. They often soar alone. True leadership is lovely, but it is also lonely. And I'd rather be a minority serving the Lord than a majority flying with the world. Will the real Christian stand up? And number two is another thing about the eagle is that this eagle sat on top of a mountain and sometimes it took days and weeks for this bird lover to find the eagle because they don't fly in groups. And he had powerful binoculars that could zoom on top of the mountain. And he said, when he saw the eagle, he said, unlike any bird in the world, when God made the American bald eagle, there are actually green isolating lenses that come over the eyes of an eagle. And he said that eagle stared for hours looking up at the S-U-N and not blink, and therefore it would not even go blind. The secular scientist wrote in his diary, it's if that bird that I idolize is acknowledging something or someone greater than itself. And he said in the midst of that moving, majestic moment, four hawks, contours, and falcons came out of nowhere, and they had the audacity to pick a fight with the powerful American bald eagle. He said, I've seen it pick up something five times its weight, carry it three quarters of an inch off the ground for three quarters of a mile. I've seen it break the back of antelopes in Australia. He said, I've seen it do some powerful things. He said, I'm not a betting man, but it could have taken on all four of those birds, the hawks, the contours, and the falcons. He said, but that eagle did something peculiar. It didn't rely on its own strength. It shot up off the mountain and <laughs> a dogfight ensued and the hawks, contours, and falcons tried to chase the American bald eagle. He said, green isolating lenses come over the eyes of the eagle, and that eagle flew as fast as it could towards the sun, and one by one, the hawks, contours, and falcons had to back off because they lost them when the eagle soared to the sun. You can be built like Stallone or Schwarzenegger, but if you rely on your own strength, you will lose. But if you look to the Lord, if you focus on the Father, you get your gaze on God and sight set on the Savior, you cannot lose when you wait on the Lord. My friends, are you waiting on the Lord or is the Lord waiting on you? I want to go to the next Frank and Friends video. We were recently in Nashville, Tennessee. My good friend Dan Meyer was American Got Talent. He's a Guinness Book World Record holder. And my buddy Nikita Koloff, the Russian Nightmare, the former world wrestling champ, we were at Steak and Shake, the three of us. You got to watch this clip. For those who think Christians are boring, you don't know my Jesus and you don't know my friends. Let's go to Nashville right now. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com. guys, welcome to another edition of Frank and Friends. Tonight we are in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with the world wrestling champ Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare. I'm with America's Got Talent, Dan Meyer, the Guinness Book of World Records sword swallower, and I got Jackie Chan running the camera. But long story <laughs> short, is, by the way, Nikita's new TV show is on Lifetime, The Preacher's Daughter. It's awesome. But anyways, both of these guys are the best. They love the Lord, but you got to watch this. All right, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. I'm going to swallow this. This is a 38 inch sword, 24 inch long blade. We're going to go down to right about here. Okay. I'll swallow it. I'll bow forward to the camera. You pull it out with your right hand, like straight up. My right, my right hand. Yeah. Straight very up. slowly, very carefully. <laughs> okay. Not too slow where my stomach will wrench on the bottom, but not too fast where it slices into my throat. Okay. Regular speed. Oh, thanks, Ray. Nikita, thanks, don't thanks, scrape Ray. it up my back. Oh, that really hurts. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank Shelton. I have a passion for God and evangelism. I'm an author, international speaker, and part comedian, but most importantly, a full communicator of God's great gospel. I'd love the opportunity to speak at your church, group, conference, or special event. Don't delay. Visit frankshelton.com today to learn more about my ministry and how I can be a blessing to you. 
The word of the day is when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. 150 years ago, Joseph Gales was a policeman in our nation's capital. He was later assigned to the White House and grew as personal friends with President Abraham Lincoln. On Good Friday, 1865, he escorted President Lincoln to Ford's Theater and was one of the first officers to respond when he was shot. On that unforgettable night, he carried the 16th president across the cobblestone streets to where America's most beloved president would die the next morning. Joseph Gales is not the entire story. Joseph is his first name, Gales is his middle name, but Shelton is his last name. Ironically, what are the odds? One of my ancestors planted in life the cherry blossoms, and my other ancestor carried the president in death. The Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings. You may not believe in God, but God believes in you. Divinity deposit his DNA in you, and you were made in his image. The Lord makes no junk. 2,000 years ago, Mother Mary was pregnant with the Son of God. She carried greatness and was the first to carry the gospel and God in the process. David, with a slingshot and a couple stones, carried greatness, not in his hands, but his head and heart. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. David toppled Goliath in private way before he destroyed him in public. Greatness comes with a price. Joseph, with the coat of many colors, had haters. They were not jealous of his colorful coat, but the colossal call of God on his life. In life, you can carry greatness or bury it. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. carried greatness with the clarion call to let freedom ring as he helped pave the way with the March on Washington, speaking on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, delivering one of the greatest speeches of all time. His dream ended the nightmare for millions of African-Americans, and with the Lord's help, they overcame. But like Lincoln, died in right to others' promised land. What went through the head of Joseph Arimathea the day on Good Friday at Calvary when he begged for the body of his Lord? What courage to confront Pontius Pilate, whom just sentenced that his Savior be slain? Today, will the real men and women of God stand up? We've been sitting out for far too long. As Christ climbed the cross, he embodied grace and greatness and took on our sin. He truly set the people free. God used a borrowed womb with Mary and a borrowed tomb of Joseph to be the bookends of Christianity. Today, the God of the universe is looking to not only borrow you, but indwell in you for eternity. Christ died and rose again that you could live. Yes, my ancestor carried the closest to the king of a nation America will ever know. What an honor. But we don't just carry the president or a preacher in their death, but the living prince of peace in our lives. It is one thing to carry an earthly king, but we carry heaven's only king by our life and our lips. We all carry greatness, but it is entirely and eternally different when greatness carries you. To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. A signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today. Hey, man, well, welcome back. It's always humbling when you find out your heroes love him, and it's an exciting time. Uh, I just love my time with you. Um, we've been sharing about waiting on the Lord, or is the Lord waiting on you? I really believe God is speaking to you today. Some of you may be watching it live on television. Some may be on an iPad, on an iPhone, maybe a week delay on Facebook. Whatever it is, just know there's no accidents or coincidence with God. I believe God's speaking to you two specific things today. Maybe he's waiting on you to finally come to faith in his son, Jesus Christ. God is not a good way to heaven. He's not your best way to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. And second of all, maybe he's waiting on you, maybe to be respectful, to share your faith with someone. Nine out of 10 born again Christians will live and die never leading anyone to faith in Jesus Christ. I've said before, I'll say it again, faith in faith is not faith, it's foolish, but faith in Jesus Christ is where it's at. Maybe God's asking you to step out on a limb, do something for God. Maybe he's calling you to be a better witness at work. Maybe he's waiting on you to use your gifts for his glory. Maybe you're to sing a special, a solo at the next service. 
maybe you're supposed to go on that missions trip that your pastor's begged you for three years and it went in one ear and out the other. I don't know, but I sense he's waiting on you for something and only you and God know it. I also want to encourage you, we talked about waiting on the Lord for your partner, your prayers, and your problems. We also have to wait on the Lord for the Prince of Peace because Schwarzenegger was not the first to say, I'll be back. It was Jesus Christ, and he's coming sooner rather than later. Christ could come tonight, and are you ready? And yes, you have to wait on the Lord for your partner, your prayers, your problems, the Prince of Peace, but this is where you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait on God for your pardon. Jesus said, today is the day of salvation. One of the most powerful stories I'll ever hear was a single father. Life throws curveballs. Everyone can hit the fastball, but even the best can get thrown off by the elusive curveball. And him and his wife broke up. He didn't see that coming. It devastated him. It destroyed him. It almost killed him. He had his daughter, the apple of his eye, every other weekend. And she had these imitation pearls, and she'd come over, and she wore them to bed, wore them to school, wore them to play, wore them to sleep. And the father, where he only saw his girl every other weekend, would say, baby, do you know daddy loves you? And she'd say, daddy, I know you love me. He says, baby, if you love me, give me the pearls. She'd look at the pearls, look at her dad, look at the pearls, look at her dad, and smile. And the six-year-old would say, I don't love you that much. And his heart would break. And he'd say, no, daddy still loves you, baby. And he would walk back with his heart hurting. He comes back another time. Baby, do you know daddy loves you? Oh, I know you love me. He said, baby, if you love me, give me the pearls. She said the same thing. Daddy, I've been thinking. I won't give you the pearls, but I'm going to give you the Barbie. I'm going to give you the Barbie pink Ferrari. I'm even going to throw in the Barbie mansion. He said, baby, I didn't ask for Barbie. Ask for the pearls. She said, daddy, not tonight. This goes on for weeks. It goes on for months. He comes in one night and something strange happened. She's on the side of her bed. The pearls are not around her neck. They're dangling from her hand. And she says, Daddy, I know you're going to ask me. Yes, I love you. Here's the pearls. And he ran in the master bedroom. He comes back and with his right hand takes the imitation pearls from his six-year-old. But in his left pocket, pulls out a black velvet box, flip the lid. It's a genuine strand of pearls. Night after night, week after week, month after month, he was waiting for his daughter to give up the trinkets because all he wanted to do was give her the treasure. She was holding on to the cubic zirconia, but he wanted to give her the real deal. And God's a gentleman. He won't give you what's in his hand till you learn to give up what's in your hand. Because until you learn to let go and let God, you're missing out on the creator of the world and you're hanging out with cubic zirconias. Are you waiting on the Lord or is the Lord waiting on you? To order an autographed copy of Frank's book, Carrying Greatness, go to frankshelton.com and click on Merch. A signed copy is only $25, and if you order now, you'll get free shipping. Don't delay. Order your copy today.